In this video, we will talk about terms leading and lagging. These terms are used to uh, compare sinusoids. We'll also touch on the common way of uh, measuring the effectiveness of a sinusoid called the effective value. Let's say we have two sinusoids, uh, V sub 1 and V sub 2, each having a different or similar amplitude, the same angular frequency, but uh, different uh, base angle. So uh, I've drawn the two uh, sinusoids here. So uh, looking closely at the two sinusoids, uh, we can state that V sub 1 lags V sub 2 by 30 degrees because V sub 1 crosses the horizontal axis 30 degrees after V sub 2 does. If we look at uh, where the two sinusoids uh, cross or when the two sinusoids cross the horizontal axis, uh, we will observe that uh, V sub 2 crosses the horizontal axis first and uh, compared to uh, the sinusoid V sub 1. And uh, in fact, uh, V sub 1 uh, crosses the horizontal axis 30 degrees after V sub 2. So therefore, we can say that uh, V sub 1 lags V sub 2 by 30 degrees because it crosses the horizontal axis 30 degrees after V sub 2 crosses that uh, axis. Or uh, conversely, we can also say that V sub 2 leads V sub 1 by 30 degrees because V sub 2 crosses the horizontal axis 30 degrees before V sub 1 crosses the same axis. Another way of comparing uh, these two sinusoids is by plotting uh, the sinusoids on a circular racetrack. So let's say uh, we plot uh, V sub 1 on the circle and uh, we plot it by first identifying the amount of uh, phase angle, so it's negative 75. So we plot uh, that sinusoid here as a small, small circle and we assume that, that the small circle is um, uh, revolving around or circling around that circle at the rate of omega radians per second. Uh, next, we also plot the sinusoid V sub 2 and uh, we see that it is plotted negative 45 degrees uh, from the horizontal as shown here and also um, circling the circle at the rate of omega radians per second. Note that since they have the same uh, frequency or angular velocity, uh, their distance will be a constant uh, between them. Now, if we consider that these uh, two sinusoids are running after the other, so in here we can see that V sub 1 is running after V sub 2, and it is uh, clearly um, uh, shown that uh, V sub 2 leads uh, V sub 1 by this amount of uh, angle, so that's 30 degrees. Now there's another uh, interpretation uh, for this comparison, however, because we could also say that uh, V sub 2 is leading, or V sub 1 is leading V sub 2 by this much angle. And V sub 2 is the one that is behind the V sub 1 by this much angle. 
So we could also say that B sub 2 logs B sub 1, but this time by 330 degrees. So the question is, uh, which is correct? Uh, is this uh, interpretation or this uh, interpretation? Now, in comparing two sinusoids, uh, who is leading or uh, who is lagging, uh, we always choose the smaller angle, which in this case is 30 degrees. So uh, we don't uh, compare it uh, this way. So this is uh, an in incorrect uh, comparison. And the correct way would be this one. So we choose the smaller angle uh, between the sinusoids. Let's have another scenario here. So let's say uh, we move B sub 2 and uh, change its phase angle by 45 degrees. So we plot it in our circular racetrack. So here is B sub 1, here's B sub 2. And uh, clearly, the angle, the smaller angle between them is 120 degrees. And so, therefore, we can conclude that B sub 2 is leading B sub 1, or B sub 1 is lagging B sub 2 by 120 degrees. Another scenario here, so again, we move B sub 2. So, B sub 1 is still maintained. So here is B sub 2, and we notice that their uh, distance around the uh, circular racetrack is 180 degrees. Now, in this scenario, it's not clear which is uh, actually leading or lagging uh, between them. So uh, when this is the case, we can say that... Uh, It is not clear who leads or lags, uh, which sinusoid is uh, leading or lagging which sinusoid. Another scenario would be uh, if uh, they have the same uh, phase angle. So in this case, uh, neither one is leading or lagging the other. So the two sinusoids are said to be in phase. So uh, sinusoids that are in phase uh, reach their uh, maxima and minima at the same time. Uh, and their amplitudes need not be the same. And lastly, uh, let's say we have this scenario where the the uh, distance between them, the, the, the difference between their phase angles is 360 degrees. So in this case, we also consider these two sinusoids to be in phase with each other. Important note in uh, comparing sinusoids in terms of uh, leading or lagging sinusoids. So uh, their angular velocity had to be the same. So that means they have the same frequency or the same period. Uh, if we compare them and draw them on a circle, they have to be expressed on the, as the same function. So it's either a sine or a cosine. Now, uh, the amount of leading or lagging between the two sinusoids will always be the smaller phase difference. Uh, let's take an example. So uh, we have here two. Uh, sinusoids, I sub 1 and I sub 2, each are expressed as the same cosine function, so the, we don't need to convert them to a sine function. And uh, uh, they have a different uh, phase angle, so therefore the, these are not uh, in phase uh, um, sinusoids, so the question is uh, which is leading and which is lagging and uh, by how much. So uh, we draw it in a circle. So based on our uh, drawing, uh, it is clearly shown that I sub 2 is lagging I sub 1 or I sub 1 is leading I sub 2 by uh, this angle.
here we have another example. Uh, let's say we have a sinusoid and we compare it to these three sinusoids and uh, determine wh where <clears throat> when uh, the sinusoid is leading or lagging these these sinusoids. Now for the first sinusoid, if we draw it in a circle, so take note, this sinusoid is in sine function. This one is also in sine function. So go, we can uh, draw it directly on the circle. So let's say this is, uh, let's say this is uh, V sub one here, and this is V sub two. So V sub one is 35, so it is somewhere here, okay? So this is V sub one, and V sub two, this, this one is uh, 35 degrees here, and V sub two is uh, 120 degrees, so it is somewhere here, here. So here, this is V sub two, and this is uh, 120 degrees, so this one is 35. So this one is 120, and the difference would be uh, this one. So this would be the difference that would be, well, that's 120 less uh, 35. Uh, that should give us 85 degrees. So this would be 85 degrees. And we can say that V sub 1 logs V sub 2 by 85 degrees, or V sub 2 leads V sub 1 by 85 degrees. For the next two examples, uh, since uh, they are expressed in cosine, so we express this in first in sine. So this is our uh, sinusoids that needs to be compared. And if we draw that, so let's say we draw it. Uh, so this is V sub one. And let's say we call this V sub three. This is V sub four here. Okay. So let's compare. Uh, so let's say this is our circle. Okay, so again, let's plot uh, V sub one. So it's uh, here, V sub one. And this is uh, 35 degrees here. This is 35. Uh, v sub 3 is positive 90, so it's somewhere here, so this is V sub 3, so this is 90 degrees, and um, V sub 4 is also uh, located the same as V sub one so this is piece of four okay and because of that uh, we can say that uh, v sub one is lagging uh, v sub three by so 90 minus 35 that will give us 55 degrees so this one is 55 And uh, V sub 1 is in phase with V sub 4 because they have the same phase angle after converting to a sine function. Okay. Now let's go to the effective value of sinusoids. So we a sinusoid to be a periodic function that has an average of 0 uh, over a single cycle. Now, uh, so how do we measure the effectiveness of uh, the sinusoid? So it is given here. Uh, it is simply equals to the uh, its amplitude divided by square root of 2. Or that would be uh, 0.707 of the amplitude. So uh, the effective value is uh, just 70.7% of its maximum value. 
Now, the other name for a an effective value of sinusoid is the uh, what we call the root mean square or RMS for sure. Now, it is uh, called that way because uh, let's say uh, we have a sinusoid V. The RMS value is really computed as the uh, a square root of the average of the integral of the square of the sinusoid so that this is square there over uh, one period so we take the average of that so we uh, so we square the sinusoid, then get the integral from 0 to t, and then average that value over the period, and lastly, take the square root of that. So that is what we mean by root mean square. So this is the root, root, the mean, and the square, so RMS. So if here, for example, uh, we have a sinusoid and we want to take the uh, RMS value or the effective value. So we simply uh, check what is the uh, amplitude and we would get here, uh, well, that would be 325 divided by square root of 2. Now for this one, for this one now we have a negative sign here so well we can convert that into positive by um, simply adding uh, 180 degrees to uh, 65 60t so that would be plus or minus 180 degrees okay 180 degrees so something like that and again, uh, we uh, solve for the amplitude or the RMS this way. So uh, there's no such thing as negative uh, RMS. So in fact, uh, if you're given this one, all you need to do is take the absolute value of the amplitude to get the effective value. So take note that the effective value uh, depends simply on the amplitude. Uh, it doesn't matter what is uh, the angular velocity or the phase of the sinusoid. So we just take the amplitude and we divide it by square root of uh, 2. Now, uh, our utility specify voltages uh, by its RMS value. So, for example, uh, in our uh, household, in our homes, uh, we see a, uh, an outlet there. It is, um, uh, it has a label there that looks like that, 230 volts. And uh, we just don't label the, the outlet like this. So this is more appropriate labeling. Okay, so uh, what is uh, good about uh, the RMS value or what's the importance of the RMS value? So let's say I have here a, a resistance, 100 ohms, and it is uh, uh, connected to a source with a sinusoid that is uh, like this. And if you compute the RMS of this, it you will, that will give you 230 volts. And then let's say I have another circuit, uh, but this time the uh, 100 ohms is connected to a, a DC that is uh, 230 volts. Um, that will uh, give uh, the same power for the 100 ohms. So. Uh, uh, or, or in other words, uh, the 100 ohms will actually consume the same power if we're going to compute it 
So uh, the RMS value is like it's a DC equivalent and that uh, it will give the same uh, heating effect as uh, a DC voltage that has uh, a value the same as the RMS value of the sinusoid. So that's uh, it for this video and uh, for the next video we will be talking uh, about the uh, response of uh, basic circuits, uh, AC circuits to sinusoidal uh, inputs. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, series RL and series RC and series RLC and uh, derive the uh, the responses um, if these circuits are connected to sinusoidal excitations. So I'll see you in the next video.